So in this video, we're going to talk about this concept of coupled reactions with respect to our Gibbs free energy and how we can use a spontaneous reaction um, to drive a non-spontaneous reaction by coupling it um, to a reaction that is spontaneous. And, and again, the key idea here is we're going to take two reactions, one that's spontaneous, and use the energy released from the spontaneous reaction to force a non-spontaneous reaction to occur. Um, and our bodies do that all the time. We can look at examples of this. Um, and one example of a coupled reaction um, is through the metabolism of glucose in our body. Um, when our bodies metabolize glucose, um, this is a long process. And an early step in this process, and this process is called glycolysis, um, but an early step is the um, is shown below, and it's the conversion of glucose to this glucose 6-phosphate. Now, we don't have to concern ourselves too much for now with the actual chemistry steps of how this process works. Um, for now, what I want us to just focus on is um, the idea is our bodies will take a glucose molecule, which is shown here, right? It actually reacts with this HPO4 2 minus, and we make what's formed as glucose 6 phosphate. And, and so you can see what happened is this HPO4 2 minus, um, the PO3 part of this gets attached to our oxygen, and in the process, we also produce water. So one of the hydrogens, and then we have an OH here come together to form our water molecule. Um, so we can look at this process and we can calculate a delta G for this reaction. Right? So just like we've done before, we can take this process and say delta G of reaction is going to be equal to the sum of our products minus the sum of our reactants. We can look up those values, and so here we have a table of our delta G of formation values, and so we can start plugging in, and hopefully we're getting good practice doing this. Products minus reactants, everything's a one-to-one -one mole ratio here, so we can take our glucose 6-phosphate, negative 1748.3, plus our water, which is a negative 237.2. Always watch your signs in these problems. We're going to subtract our reactants. So we have our glucose, negative 910.1. And then we're going to add to that our HPO42 minus, which is a negative 1089.2. So again, just products minus reactants. You pause the video, do this calculation to check for yourself. When I did it, I got a delta G that is a positive, positive. 13.8, put my units back in kilojoules per mole, right? So this is the Gibbs free energy for this first step of our glycolysis, the metabolism of glucose. And one of the things we should take away is this, this is a non-spontaneous reaction. But this is happening in our bodies. So how can this happen? Right, because what we just calculated is this is a non-spontaneous reaction, um, meaning it will not happen on its own. And yet, this is one of the first steps to take glucose and metabolize it in our body to a form that we can use and get the energy out that we need. And so how can this happen? What we're going to see is what we need to do is we need to couple this reaction. And that's the key word, couple this reaction. And what we mean by that is we're going to, by pairing this with another reaction, that has a large negative 
delta g. And so what we're going to do is we're going to perform this non-spontaneous reaction right next to a reaction that is spontaneous. So the energy of the spontaneous reaction can actually overcome this 13.8 kilojoules per mole. So we need a reaction that has a negative delta G greater than 13.8. So how do our bodies do that? Well, you might know this from biology courses or um, previous chemistry courses. The way our body does this is through the hydrolysis of ATP. So ATP is one of the ways our bodies is able to store energy, right? We call this the energy storing molecule. And that's because of this reaction that's shown below. Um, and in this reaction, we see we have um, ATP. This is the structure of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, okay, plus water produces adenosine diphosphate plus HPO4 2 minus plus H plus. And as we're going to see in a second, also gets produced from this is a lot of energy. So we can rewrite this, this same reaction. And just, I wanted to show you the structures, but we can just rewrite this as saying ATP 4 minus plus H2O, and this is liquid, this would be aqueous, goes to a DP 3 minus aqueous plus HPO4 2 minus aqueous plus H plus aqueous. So we can write it in a shorthand here. And if we were to go through and calculate delta G of this, and we'll skip that step, but we can go ahead and tell you delta G for this reaction is negative 30.5 kilojoules per mole. So this is a very large negative spontaneous reaction. And so that's why we can use ATP to store energy because we have a lot of water in our body. So if we have ATP around at any given time when we need energy, we can go through this reaction where we convert ATP in water into ADP, HPO4, and H+, and we're gonna release negative 30.5 kilojoules per energy per, per mole. Before we go on to a problem, let's stop and just consider um, where does this energy come from? Where is this energy stored in ATP and how is it released? And recall that a couple of key things, breaking bonds requires energy. And forming bonds releases energy. So where does this energy come from? It comes from the forming of bonds. So how does ATP hydrolysis release energy? Well, we must be forming stronger bonds in the products than the reactants. And that's really the key. Where this energy is coming from is actually the formation of bonds in your HPO4. It's the formation of the O to the P here during this hydrolysis step. Um, it's not the breaking of this molecule. That is not correct. It's the forming of these molecules on the product side that's gonna release our energy. So now that we have that, Let's go through a problem and let's work through this and say, how are we gonna do this? And let's look at this. So we can say the hydrolysis of ATP can be coupled with the conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate to make the process spontaneous. And what we wanna do is calculate delta G for this reaction. So anytime we have these 
coupled reaction problems. Okay, what we're going to be doing is we're going to add the reactions together. And we might have two reactions, we might have three reactions, we might have four, but we're going to add them together. And after we do that, we're going to cross out anything that's the same on both sides of our arrow. Oops. On both sides of our reaction arrow. And then finally, we're going to add our delta G of reactions together to get our overall delta G coupled. Okay. And so let's go through that example. And so what we have here shown is the two reactions we've looked at, the hydrolysis of ATP and then the conversion of our glucose to glucose 6 phosphate. And we're given our delta G of reactions for both of those. So when we perform this, the first thing I'm going to do is add my reactions together, and then we're going to add our delta Gs together. And we can cross out anything that's going to be the same on both sides of our reaction arrow. And so sometimes we can do this as we look at these, or if we look at this, we say we have a water on our reactant side, and we have a water on our product side. And so we can cross those out. Water goes away. Water goes away. We can say we then have an HPO4 2 minus on our reactant side and an HPO4 2 minus on our product side. So those we can cross out. And then we can take everything else down and we're going to add it together. And we're going to say what's left on our reactants. We have ATP 4 minus aqueous plus our glucose C6. H12O6 solid, and that's everything on our reactant sides combined, goes to ADP, 3 minus aqueous, plus our H plus aqueous, plus our C6H12O6 PO3, 2 minus aqueous. So that's the overall coupled reaction. And our delta G for this process is going to be the sum of our negative 30.5 kilojoules per mole plus the 13.8 kilojoules per mole. So delta G, and sometimes you'll see this is double delta G coupled, because these are reaction coupled together, is going to be negative 16.7 kilojoules Per mole. And what you can see is the combined process is spontaneous. So what we did is we used the hydrolysis of ATP to take our reaction that started off as being a non-spontaneous reaction, but we can perform it with ATP and we end up with our spontaneous reaction.